What's going on everybody? Alex here with Freedom Mowers. Hope you all are doing well. I'm gonna start on a new project today. Hopefully have some fun. Got this old Murray wide body. It's been sitting around, kind of rotting away. There's no engine, no mower deck. Um, let's see, no battery. The trans pulley on here is basically rotting away. There's not much left of it. But the goal is to basically make like a hot rod slash type race mower and uh, have some fun. So I've got a 12 and a, horse, 12 and a half horse Briggs uh, that we're going to put in here. At least get it up and running. And then once I get the engine put in, we're going to have to go ahead and probably drop the rear end so we can get that pulley off from there. And I'll have to go either up to the store or fabricate some kind of a pulley and then we will get a proper size belt. Also probably going to be dropping down the front end. The rear on this is already, it does sit pretty low already and it does have a nice wide stance. Uh, also maybe drop the rear later on but right off the bat um, that's going to take quite a bit of fabrication because all of the clutch mechanism and also the uh, shift rod is like right above the pulley so normally what you'd want to do is notch the frame and bring this up or uh, flip the axle uh, and I don't think we're gonna do that quite yet just want to get get it up and going and then we'll get the pulleys on here see how everything's running and then we'll see about lowering the front end maybe uh, flipping the spindles on here we'll see uh, if that doesn't work, you can always take the uh, front axle here and bring that up. So that's kind of the goal with it. See if we can put a cool paint job on it at some point too. But let's get started. I'm going to pull this thing in the shop. We're going to get an engine on it and at least get it up and running and go from there. All right, got it in here. Took the hood off. Just one pin and slide that off. That way we've got ease of access. Apologize for the light right now. The sun is beaming through the door. But this 12 and a half horse I've got, I honestly don't even know if it runs. I have to find a carburetor for it. And we should, I've got to find some mounting hardware, but go ahead and get this thing plopped on here and we can start getting it hooked up. It's real simple. On this one, we just got a throttle, cable, fuel line. We've got the hot lead going to the starter. We've got two going to our charging system and then just a ground for the uh, the kill on the magneto but yeah let me go ahead and get the engine on here and then we'll start hooking everything up all right got the 12 and a half on here this is from the year 2000 honestly probably about the same time frame as this mower but I did go and source out a uh, it's a really clean Walboro carburetor and the intake manifold as well I've got the mounting bolts for that and mounting bolts for the engine. I just set it right on here and lined up the hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this engine down on the frame and then get the carburetor mounted and we'll start working on getting all the wiring and linkages hooked up. All right, well, I've got this thing tightened down. Got the whole carburetor set up on there. I went ahead and got the throttle linkage all hooked up properly so and go all the way forward the choke right here closes so everything should be good there on the other side it was real simple just had the one wire going to the the coil the kill and then our positive cable going to the starter that's our headlights and then we just have our charging wires and that's it so I did check there is basically no oil in this thing so I need to top off the oil and also I checked the fuel tank and as you guys can see this thing is disgusting so I'm gonna have to pull the fuel tank out of here and clean that but in the meantime let me top off the oil I'll grab the jumper pack we'll hit it with some carb spray and see if we can get this thing to kick off at least I got the jumper pack hooked up, 
I did bump the key just to make sure the solenoid and everything was going to work. So, um, let's see. I know is that safety switch. That safety switch is hooked up. So we should be good to go here. Let's hit it with a little race gas. Choke it. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah. Just kick right over. I'll do it one more time. Awesome. Yeah, it was down quite a lot on the oil. I almost added an entire quart. But hopefully this carburetor is good. Uh, I did take the bowl off and it was super clean on the inside. So we'll just roll the dice. And I guess what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead off camera, just pop this dash loose and get this tank out. Because I don't feel like trying to go hunting around for an auxiliary tank. Because one way or the other, I got to clean this one out anyways. So let me get this tank clean. And then we'll hook up fuel line to it and hopefully get this thing running on its own. All right, well, I got the tank back in. I haven't bolted the dash back down, but I put a little bit of fuel in there. I've been letting it sit for a few minutes and that leak checked good. So I just put an inline filter in here, hooked it up. Seems like needle and seats working. I don't see any flooding out of the carburetor. So I'm going to give this thing a whirl. Moment of truth. Do we have a good engine? Well, we got a good running engine so far. It seems like it is smoking a little bit, um, which we could have uh, some worn out rings in this thing, but I do have, I have a plethora of some Briggs. So worst case, if we end up blowing this thing up, we'll put another one in it. So see if this thing will crank back right up. I think the throttle response on it's pretty good too so we definitely got a good carb i really like the wall bros so we'll probably run that stock exhaust for the time being but like the i don't know maybe we'll straight pipe this thing who knows definitely going to be like a hot rod type uh mower going to have some fun with it the next step i guess it's going to be going to have to pull this rear end out of here and then i'm going to try to see what i can come up with for a pulley and then we'll have to get the right belt size but so far we're making good headway i mean we started from a chassis and a unknown motor and now we're running so all right well i've done some looking around I'm trying to figure out how this rear end comes out because they're a little bit different usually just the linkages and stuff like that are hooked up but just have four bolts. You got two on each side. There's a third mounting bolt that goes up into the frame towards the front on the left side of this. And then just have the shift linkage, which has a cotter pin. So I think I'll just probably pull the cotter pin and leave the linkage attached. And I'll get this up in the air in the rear. We should just be able to pull the whole rear end out. That way we can get eyes on that pulley because I know that thing is going to be froze on there. I'm guessing that I'm probably going to have to cut that thing off, but we'll see. We'll get this rear end out and let's take a look. 
All right, there was one other thing I had missed, and that was just taking the uh, the brake loose on here as well. But you guys can see now, we've got the uh, transaxle dropped out of here, and we just have this clip. But you guys can see how rusty this thing is. I'm only imagining it's like basically welded together. So I'm gonna put some penetrating spray on here and probably start putting some heat to it and see if I can maybe wedge something underneath of the pulley, kind of suspend it, and then start knocking on the actual shaft and see if we can't get this thing punched out. But if we do, I'm gonna take this up to the store and see what kind of pulleys I can find and something that's gonna mount up. But I'll show you guys after I get this pulley off from here and show you how I did it. All right, well, I've been working at this thing for probably 45 minutes and I am whooped. It is hot, hot, hot. I finally got the pulley off from here, but basically I had to cut all around the pulley until I got to the hub. And I basically had to go around the hub and just keep cutting it and cutting it. Um, I didn't, there's like one tiny little spot on the shaft where I touched, but everything's good to go there. But my goodness, that. That was unbelievable. I had it basically this far off, over halfway cut, and it still was fighting me every step of the way. But at least now I should be able to go up to the store and hopefully match up a hub with that and probably get us like a three inch pulley for the rear and we can finally start moving ahead. But all right, just went up to the store and measured up a pulley for this. Should be good for a half inch belt that was on here and the same diameter for the hub size got two uh, set screws on it and key way everything lines up so I'm gonna get that mounted up and then get the transaxle back underneath of here and once we get that mounted up then I can take the old belt that was broken and route it through and we can start taking a measurement to get at least a pretty close size on the, the belt so I got the transaxle mounted in here Pulley and everything fits. I did go up to the store. I got a couple of belts and I think I got one that's gonna work for us. Now, on this one, the actual drive belt goes uh, on both sides of the steering shaft. So I was originally gonna try to take the steering wheel off and that was pretty much seized on here just like everything else. So what I ended up doing was just kind of sliding up this little grommet here and pulling up this cover plate and I was able to get the belt on one side and on the other and routed it basically through the dash and I will show you guys where we're at here so I do have so you guys can see I have the belt on to the engine side and that runs down it goes on either side of the steering shaft and then we are on the tensioner as well and so everything looks pretty good here but what issue I'm having sorry I'm trying to get y'all out the light the shift uh, rod itself that goes to the transmission now that we've um, taken down the size on the rear pulley we're having some clearance issues so what I'm gonna do is I am gonna be putting I guess kind of a uh, another tensioner over here on the side and it's just an idler pulley and I'll show you all what I'm gonna be doing I've got this metal plate I've already marked it out I'm gonna go ahead and just cut a strip out and that strip is gonna go from one side to the other on the frame and then I'm just going to use one of these holes here to mount up the idler on it and if I need to I'll put a spacer or something that way the belts get aligned right but what that's going to do is allow me to put enough tension on this side of the belt to keep it off from the shift shaft so I'm going to get this cut out I'll get it mounted up and I'll show you guys what it looks like and after that we should be good hopefully to give this thing a test ride show y'all where we're at 
So here is that cross member that I put in and went ahead and put the idler to keep the tension on it and keep it away from the shift rod. But this is basically the whole layout. Let me disengage or engage. So now that would be basically in drive with the clutch out. And everything seems to be lined up here. I did have to space out this pulley to get everything in line here. But we should be pretty good. I've gone ahead and tightened up the Allen screws on the rear pulley. Shift linkage is all hooked up and yeah, we should be good to go. I don't have the air box set up on here right now, so I'm going to go ahead and get the hood on here, get this thing dropped down, make sure it cranks up, and then we're going to take this thing for a test ride. Jumper packs hooked up. up through the first test run so I'll take you guys for a ride along. I think I got a little dirt in the carburetor but I'll give it a shot.
we got some carburetor issues still. Oh my goodness. This thing is a blast to drive already. Can't quite tell if that belt is slipping or not. Doesn't feel, I think we got it pretty good. It's definitely wet out here though, so might end up with some slipping issues, but yeah, that's that was the main goal is to get this thing scooting a bit. And it definitely, definitely seems like it pulls pretty good. Um, we'll have to do some top speed runs on the next video, but so far we got an engine that was not on here. We got the rear end pulley swapped out. I did end up putting a little bit larger uh, front pulley on. It was just off another double stack pulley that I had. So I'm not exactly sure what the ratio is we have right now, but We'll start getting into the fun stuff on the next one. We'll work on a handbrake, a gas pedal on it. We're gonna ultimately drop down the front. Gonna get a sweet paint job on this thing, but yeah, so far we got a good baseline and we got it going and we can only make it better from here, so. I'm super excited. We'll, uh, we'll keep working on other projects as well, but this one's definitely gonna be uh, a work in progress here for a little bit and we'll probably have a multi-part series on this but we're gonna have some fun so I appreciate y'all checking out the channel as always and uh, look forward to hearing from you guys and if you would maybe hit that subscribe button if you do like this kind of content I really appreciate it so on that note let freedom ring let those small engines sing I'll see you all next time